This video is sponsored by Opera. Calm. Calm. Ah. The last issue of the prestigious magazine New Scientist contains this headline. Do you notice anything not quite right about it? Well, if you weren't sure whether the New Scientist comes from the US or from England, this headline tells you pretty clearly that it's the latter. In this video, I'll explain and explore the mistake, which can be found not just in print, but in speech, on radio and TV, and in the movies. Most native speakers of English, which includes the vast majority in North America, are what we call rhotic. They preserve all the historic R sounds that we can see in English orthography or spelling. Their speech exhibits a close correspondence between the pronounced consonant R and the written letter R. But millions of other speakers, including me, don't pronounce all the historic R sounds. I only pronounce R if it's directly before a vowel sound, and not elsewhere. Speakers like me are called non-rhotic, though I think it would be more accurate to call us partially rhotic. But it's not just a matter of losing the R sound. This sound can also be heard from millions of non-rhotic speakers when there isn't an R in the spelling. The largest number of them is in England. The King of Kings creates the unchangeable law of good authority. Lions, leopards, cheetah and snow leopards. The chance to catch a glimpse of the wickedest rapper of them all, 22-year-old Vanilla Rice. Stromberg has a marine research laboratory on Corsica, I believe. At the villa of the Baron de Signac. At the villa of the Baron de Signac. I saw a film today, oh boy. That place, Jamaica Inn. What a bad name. We also hear this from Welsh people. It's also heard in Australia. The Queen has never declined to appoint the person that the government of Australia asks for. But, but we come from Australia and, and it's a very non-hierarchical way of making films. He's been doing business back and forth between Australia and China, including with the Tsai Jia Ying uh, mine. We were arguably probably five years behind in Australia anyway, and this has caught us up to speed. And New Zealand. Labour leader Jacinda Ardern. And Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is here now. That's what Jacinda Ardern said. Jacinda Ardern is now heading to a new environment. In fact, as I explained in a previous video, these varieties of English can be divided into two. The Northwestern, where most people pronounce written R all the time, and the Southeastern, where most speakers only pronounce R right before a vowel sound. That's a bit of an oversimplification because unwritten R sounds can be heard in America, though only in some regional accents that nowadays get relatively little access to the media, such as the traditional accents of New York City and Boston. In all that time, you've done nothing but draw a very handsome salary. You think that's nothing, huh? How many men do you suppose are drawing a handsome salary nowadays? And withdrawing these weapons from Cuba, which has turned Cuba against your friends and neighbors in the Americas. America, and that radical idea is... So unwritten R is not characteristic of general American accents, aside from some marginal cases where the American R-coloured vowel of nurse crops up in words with no letter R, like colonel, and as a substitute used by some speakers for German O umlaut. The music of Igor Stravinsky, I should also mention Arnold Schoenberg. Goebbels, uh, under Hitler's suggestions. Danke schön, Deutschland. But those very limited cases differ from all the preceding examples where the unwritten R appears between two words, linking them together. This unwritten linking R can be absolutely baffling for those millions of Northwestern rhotic speakers in Scotland, Ireland and North America as well as for non-native speakers of English, not to mention the YouTube automatic captioner. Your support will fund Alzheimer's Society's lifeline, telephone and online services where trained dementia advisors, trained dementia advisors, trained dementia advisors. 
So this pronunciation feature can be found from a wide range of speakers in different parts of the world and in different eras, and it unsurprisingly causes a lot of confusion. I'm going to clarify what's going on, showing that while most of the time the unwritten R makes perfect sense, there are undeniably cases where something is going wrong. But first, I'd like to show you just how much easier my job has been made by the Opera browser. I've used a lot of different browsers and I was genuinely amazed at just how different it is to move to Opera. Preparing my videos always means having a bewildering number of tabs open, but Opera has tab islands so that sites that are linked to each other are colour-coded and easily collapsed and expanded. Another feature I really like is Lucid Mode, which enhances the image with just the click of a button, and look how you can check the image before and after with this wiper. But probably the most game-changing thing about Opera is the customizable sidebar, which collects in one place a whole range of apps, including Messenger and WhatsApp, which I've been using to consult colleagues without even leaving the browser. I can check Instagram and X, and there's even this built-in player with Apple Music, Spotify and others. The sidebar even has AI built right into it. Opera's completely free native AI is ARIA, and for me probably its greatest value is in helping me find aspects of the topic I'm working on that I might have missed, and suggesting avenues I might not otherwise have explored. I find the whole thing beautifully designed, and would definitely recommend that you try experiencing Opera for yourself. Of course, it's free to download, and you can do that right now via the link in the description. Now, many of you will be aware that the phenomenon I've been calling unwritten linking R is widely known by another shorter name, intrusive R. I don't think I'm ever going to get people to drop the term. In fact, for convenience, I often use it myself. But let me at least explain why I dislike it. My reasons have nothing to do with political correctness or trying to avoid hurting anyone's feelings. According to one dictionary I checked, intrusion means appearing somewhere when you're uninvited, and or with disruptive effects. Now, anyone who thinks that the unwritten linking R is turning up without any justification, or is disrupting the regularity of linguistic structure, is just plain wrong. The whole point of linking R is to avoid sound sequences that the language clearly doesn't like. Try to think of a basic word of English in which, say, schwa uh, is immediately followed by any other vowel, like lice. You won't find one because there can't be one. As I explain in detail in my video on why these symbols are all wrong, basic English words just won't allow most vowel sequences. Now, people in the southeastern accents extend this, so they don't allow such vowel sequences anywhere, not even across two words, as in vanilla ice. It's to prevent the sequence that the sound r can be epenthesized. It's exactly the same r that's epenthesized in, say, polar ice, because in these southeastern accents, polar and vanilla end in exactly the same sound, schwa, u. Uh. It's like the vowel that's epenthesized in Hamtramck, Michigan. Welcome to Hamtramck. Pronouncing nk at the end of a word isn't physically difficult, nk. But English doesn't allow it, so it gets broken up. Or hard attack in the idea, which is a glottal stop epenthesized to break up the idea. Non-rhotic speakers today are not dropping their R's. The R dropping happened long ago. Today the R's just aren't there. This is why we non-rhotics just have to remember to write Gibraltar with an R on the end, but Malta without one like we all have to remember to write Noah with an H on the end and Goa without one. The pronunciation doesn't tell you. Likewise, non-rhotic speakers have to remember that Jakarta is written with an R in the stressed syllable and Armada isn't. And quite often, non-rhotic speakers don't remember, as we can see on all kinds of websites and in the New Scientist. The linking R today is an epenthetic sound, determined not by history or spelling, but by the phonetic context. 
Specifically, it can be used when a word beginning in a vowel is directly preceded by the vowels of per, peer, pair, poor, for anyone who still has that as a separate vowel, poor, par, and paper. Now, the last three of these are also the vowels of poor, par, and papa. And it's when linking R is used after words like these, with no historic R in the spelling, that the people who don't use linking R really notice it. Making a distinction between linking R when it's written and linking R when it's not written is sensible in describing the history of English, or explaining what's going on to, say, confused English learners. But as far as contemporary phonology is concerned, linking R is all one thing. The condemnation of the unwritten kind is based on graphology, the worship of writing. Writing is culturally of immense importance, but in human language it's merely an optional extra. Writing can only be learned, if it's learned at all, by people who've already acquired the language, the spoken language. Forcing the spoken language to follow the writing system, especially the inconsistent writing system of English, is really the leash wagging the dog. There even used to be condemnation of intrusive R from people who used it themselves. In fact, a myth arose that RP, received pronunciation, didn't have it. Which is why I made this video demonstrating that you can hear unwritten linking R in educated British speech dating back a century. And this is why I think the Routledge Dictionary of Pronunciation is quite justified in showing where linking R can take place, even when there's no R in the spelling. However, there's one type of situation in which I think the term intrusive is entirely justified. This is when speakers who use unwritten R in their own accent of English carry it over into other linguistic systems that don't. We hear this sometimes when they speak foreign languages, or attempt to copy a rhotic accent of English. Here's a non-rhotic English speaker giving a speech in German. Wie ich Ihnen für Ihre überaus freundlichen Worte. Now look what happens when he uses the German for this evening. Es ist wunderbar, heute Abend. Heute Abend. For Charles, the German word heute rhymes with English Leute. They both end in schwa, which can be separated from a following vowel by linking R. Now, German is similar in that it also doesn't want these vowels to touch. But the German separator is glottal stop, hard attack. Heute Abend. Heute Abend. Heute Abend. Heute Abend. Heute Abend. Heute Abend. To the extent that Charles is trying to reproduce the sound of German, his heute Abend is a fail. That R shouldn't be there. It's an intrusion, not because it's an inserted epenthetic sound, but because it's the wrong epenthetic sound. We've already heard Welsh singer Charlotte Church intruding an R into Latin and whatever language you want to trace Hosanna back to. You could claim that this phrase has been borrowed into English, like the name of this restaurant chain. Um, I just popped into Bella Italia. Bella Italia. Either way, I can promise you that there are choir masters throughout the southeastern English speaking world who struggle every Christmas to stop their choirs singing Hosanna in Excelsis. Perhaps the most common example of R intruding into other linguistic systems is when English performers attempt a rhotic American accent. Well, anything with an R in it is, yeah. you know, you've got to pay attention. No doubt Hugh Laurie is correct, but probably the bigger danger is when there isn't an R. It's not just a matter of reproducing a physical way of speaking, which is what actors often think about, but of being aware of a rule. Actors can become aware of rules. Here's Matt Damon explaining the epithetic R of Boston. Teach me a little Boston phrase. What should I say if I go to Boston? Like the word ma, right, ma. for your mother, yeah. yeah. If that word was followed by a vowel, you'd have to add an R. So you'd say, is Myra upstairs? Is Myra upstairs? If Matt Damon can remember to add an R after words like ma, I think English actors can learn not to add one when they attempt rhotic accents like General American or Belfast. Look, you are not the woman to die, all right, Don? Even if you do, sure, I can look after ma, all right? Ma, all right. Of course, it's not just the vowel of ma. 
Hi, it's Joel, the dialect coach outside London's National Theatre. Thought it might be a good time to talk about intrusive R. So if you have a word that ends in a uh or ah, uh, and it's followed by a word that starts with a vowel sound, in an English accent you might throw an R in there, like the idea of it, or I saw it. And if you're English doing an American accent, you want to keep the tip of your tongue down at the end of the word that ends in the uh or ah, uh, so you say the idea of it, or I saw it. Joel's advice there is lovely as far as it goes, but it does rather suggest that his own accent lacks the R or distinction, since, as we've seen, there are not two danger vowels for English actors, but three, as on the end of paw, pa, and papa. The three danger vowels aren't equally dangerous. There's a dozen or so common English words ending in the vowel or that have no historic R in the spelling, with law, saw, and draw topping the list. The vowel R, with no historic R in the spelling, at the end of a word is more of an oddity in English. There's spa and bra and schwa. We've got two syllables. Which one's got the schwa in it? I don't know which one's got the schwa in it. But it's found mostly in informal or familiar words like grandma, grandpa, la di da, da da. This kind of active celebration of imperfection was dadaism and punk for a digital age. Onomatopoeic words like ha ha and ba the sheep noise, exclamations like hurrah, and a few names like Omaha and Arma, and borrowings like voila and Francois. Francois Hollande clearly is the favourite, but President Sarkozy, he's challenged Francois Hollande to three TV debates. But by a mile, the most common of the three danger vowels is schwa, which occurs on the end of hundreds of words written with the final letter A. So it may come in after these. This is where you're going to hear it a ton. Obviously, these are the words that are going to turn up the most if, say, BBC Radio decides to adapt an American novel with English actors. To go for his gun had probably seemed like a good idea at the time. He looked about as inconspicuous as a tarantula on a slice of angel food. Where's Velmorat? I leaned back on the sofa against something hard. Now, all those linking R's are ones that those actors would use when speaking with their own English accent. And if all the characters in the story are meant to have the accent of, say, Groucho Marx or JFK, OK, I wouldn't call them intrusive errors. But when the actors are pretending to be Americans who pronounce most of their R's, they're just a mistake. And there's another kind of intrusive rhotic mistake, which is even worse. Namely, creating unwritten R's that you wouldn't even get in your own accent, let alone anyone else's. This is when there's not even a following vowel to link to. Take the word saw. We've already heard John Lennon linking saw to a following vowel. I saw a film today. But without a following vowel, saw is never pronounced with a following r. Or is it? So sometimes I'll be speaking in my normal voice and sometimes I'll be slipping into a Kylie Jenner kind of American voice. So sometimes you want to go seesaw, seesaw. I don't think Kylie Jenner ever says seesaw. Note that although this r is intruding where it doesn't belong, it's still rule governed. The problem is that the rule itself is a mistake. The rule that the southeastern vowels or, r, and u uh, can always be converted to northeastern or, r, and er. The correspondence only works when there's a historic R, as shown in the spelling. So you can convert English saw to American saw if it's this word or this word, but not if it's this word. That's an overgeneralization, sometimes called a hypercorrection. And you can convert English gender to American gender, but you can't do the same with a gender. Brings us once again to the urgent realization of just how much there is still left to own. Item six on the agenda the meaning of life. That's a good idea you got there. A moment ago, I was about to say that nobody pronounces these unwritten, non linking R's in their own accent. But in fact, that wouldn't be 100% true. 
Just occasionally, you find an American who does this kind of thing in their own speech. Now, I've been all over this beautiful state of Iowa. Iowa. Free speech is a bedrock principle of our constitutional democracy. It is taught in schools from grade school. It is taught, taught. I've often heard it claimed that President Kennedy used to say Cuba, but as far as I'm aware, he only did this immediately before a vowel, just as Matt Damon described for a Boston accent. Unless I'm mistaken, JFK's unwritten R's are basically just the linking kind that you hear in England and Australia. And withdrawing these weapons from Cuba, which has turned Cuba against your friends and neighbours in the Americas. So for actors with my kind of accent aiming at general American or other rhotic accents, the good news is that the spelling tells you whether to pronounce the R. For rhotic speakers, of course, this is blindingly obvious. How could it not be so obvious to us non-rhotics? You see, when we're young, we learn to treat the letter R much less literally than rhotic speakers. Remember the H in knower but not goer? If we non-rhotics see the letter R after the letter A, all it does is change the vowel, much like the letter W. So Dan becomes Dawn or Darn. We don't pronounce the letters W and R as consonants unless they're before a vowel, like in ride and wide. In fact, AR is probably the most common spelling of the vowel R. Check out this video for Australian kids learning to read. R, R, R. You're a superstar if you know the sound R. Large, large, all R, J. Grass, grass, G, R, R, S, start, start, S, T, R, T. You're a superstar if you know the sound R. Believe it or not, it was only when I studied linguistics as an undergraduate that I discovered that all those R's in American speech line up almost perfectly with the spelling. Without being taught, we just don't notice the regularities of other linguistic systems. Of course, once you've had the simple facts of roticity pointed out to you, it's hardly rocket science, and it does seem slightly odd that it's proved so hard to teach to English actors including some of the most dedicated and talented. You think anyone in Hiroshima or Nagasaki gives a f who built the bomb? Hiroshima isn't about you. I can't claim to have seen all Gary Oldman's films, but whenever I see him playing Americans, intrusive R's do seem to turn up. Of course, with fictional characters, we can't always be sure what accent they're meant to have, but in Harry S. Truman's case, we do know what he sounded like. He was from Missouri, a region where both Midwestern and Southern features can be heard. But for present purposes, what matters is that Truman was essentially rhotic, and this clip shows Truman not using linking R in exactly the kind of place where, say, English folk would be likely to. We've got the thing stabilized again on the 38th parallel, the ob uh, object, in setting the Korean Peninsula up like it was. Now, if you look at the Korean Peninsula at night, you see some obvious things. The Korean Peninsula up like it was. The Korean Peninsula at night. It could be significant that Gary Oldman was being directed there by London-born Christopher Nolan, who has a non-rhotic accent. As does Ridley Scott, who directed Gary Oldman in Hannibal. I hope it'll help you catch him, to help cleanse the stigma of your recent dishonour. Those intrusive examples from Oppenheimer and Hannibal are both linking R's, the kind Gary Oldman would use in his own accent. But I'm afraid he does also sometimes use the non-linking kind, the kind that nobody, or almost nobody, uses in their own accent. A French director this time. <laughs> I like these calm little moments before the storm. Calm, calm. 
I still remember being struck by that one 30 years ago and wondering if it was a reference to karma, which for us Southeasterners sounds the same, yes, exactly the same as karma. But no, courtesy of Christopher Nolan again, we have confirmation that the old man R in calm was indeed an intrusion. Hello? Jeff, we're in trouble. Barbara, calm down. Hello, Jim. Calm down. Calm down. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sometimes a L says ah. Uh. Mr. Spelling!